Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be talking about memoization. So, uh, what is memoization? Right. So, it's an optimization strategy where instead of having to um, call and do the work of maybe a very expensive function or method multiple times, uh, we cache the result of a call uh, to that function. That way, when we have subsequent calls, we don't have to you know completely do this maybe expensive function. We can just return the cached result. And so we'll show how we can do this uh, very simply uh, in the case of Fibonacci. Right? Uh, so let's go ahead and open this up. So Fibonacci is you know, it's generally the first program uh, that you'll write that deals with recursion. And most likely the code that you've written looks something like this. So we can ignore this call. So this is just for tracking how many times we've called uh, this function Fibonacci. Right? So how many, uh, the depth of our recursion. So here, right, so if we hit a base case, right, of one uh, or zero, we go ahead and return n. Otherwise, we recursively call Fibonacci with n minus one and n minus two. Okay, so what do we really want to understand here? So we want to understand the order of these calls and basically what's going on there. And this will give us some insight into, you know, why optimizations like memoization uh, are so helpful here. So, you know, let's go ahead and consider the case where uh, we've got, we'll do this orange for a call. So we have, say, fib of six. So we're doing the Fibonacci, whatever the six uh, Fibonacci number is, right? And then we get two calls out of this. We get a Fibonacci of n minus one, which is five, and then Fibonacci of n minus uh, two, which will be four. And then these will continue down. So Fibonacci of five, we'll call Fibonacci of four, and then it will also call uh, Fibonacci of three, right? And likewise, Fibonacci of four will do a similar thing, right? And these will continue down all the way until we get to our base cases. All right, so what's an interesting property here uh, that we're going to try to exploit, right? So let's take a look at the unique work that's actually being done here. So when we call Fibonacci of five, it calls Fibonacci of four and three. But we see that on the other side of this tree, we have Fibonacci of four, right? So we're basically doing this Fibonacci of four call twice, which means that both sides, the left and the right side of this uh, subtree here, starting at Fibonacci of four, will be ex these will these two subtrees, right, right here, and right here are duplicates, right? So we're basically repeating a lot of work here. And this continues all throughout our tree, right? So Fibonacci of four, we'll, uh, we'll call Fibonacci of three and two, which basically means that, you know, this call in the entire uh, subtree over here, these will be completely redundant as well. So, you know, should we really do all these calls, right? So, right, so if we do Fibonacci of six, do we really need to call Fibonacci of four or can we just use the value that we've already computed? And so if we take the case where, um, let's say we compute Fibonacci of n minus one first, right? So starting at our base case, right? We'll basically go down this left side of the tree all the way to the bottom, right? And we can just store all those results. So we get Fibonacci of six, five, four, eventually three, two, one, and then eventually we'll go to the right side for one time uh, for zero. Right, because we have two base cases, one and zero. Right, so all we have to do is basically go down one side of this tree and we've computed all the unique values that we'll see at any other part in the tree. So that's really what we're going to show with memoization um, and how we can do that. So let's go back to our code. Right, so um, so first of all, let's, let's do a quick performance comparison, right? So here's of n equals six and let's go ahead and compile this, right? So we'll just compile it and run it. And we see that when we call Fibonacci of six with our normal recursive function, right, we get the number eight, which is correct. And then we also get the number of calls. So just to get the six Fibonacci number, right, it ends up taking 25 recursive calls to Fibonacci. All right, that's, that's quite a few calls for, you know, the six number, right? So what happens if we scale this, right? So what happens if we scale this to say, oops, what happens if we scale this to say n is equal to 40, right? So we'll go ahead and recompile this and run it. Wow, right, so it, 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 it gets dramatically worse, right? So now we're at, um, you know, 331,160,281 calls 
to get the 40th Fibonacci number, right? So that's 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 pretty bad, All right? So, you know, why is it this bad? Well, it basically means that, you know, when we call Fibonacci of 40, right, we end up calling Fibonacci of 39 and Fibonacci of 38, right? And then both sides of those trees end up expanding out. So we get two branches from 38, two branches from 37, 36, 35, and we get two branches from all the sub, uh, from all all the different sub nodes in that graph. So you know, this is why we end up getting 331 uh, million calls to Fibonacci in this case, just to get the 40th number. So how do we fix this with memoization, right? So over here, we've got a different uh, version of Fibonacci. So we'll, we'll track the calls again, except this time we're going to pass in two things. So not just n, we'll pass in this integer um, array temp as well. Now this will just be to a, a, a little array to store the temporary results of Fibonacci. So if we hit our base case, right, we still have to have a, a way to handle our base case, we just return in, right, so that's fine. However, we have this other if statement in here, right, and this basically stops recursion when we've hit a value that someone, that some other call has already computed, right, so if temp of n, right, that's whatever the current call is, if that value is not zero, so we initialize that array to all zeros, if it's not zero, that means some other call has already computed this. So stop recursion here, right? So this is the case where, you know, we call, you know, in this case, Fibonacci of 40. It calls Fibonacci of 39 and 38, right? So maybe the 39 one goes first. So it goes 39, 38, 37, goes all the way down. So then when it goes to the other side of the tree, right? So in this case, if we open it back up, so Fibonacci of six, right? Maybe the order of the functions would go six, then five, then four, then three, then two, etc. Right? So when Fibonacci of four on the other side of the tree gets called, it will just see a value that's already been computed because it was already done right here. Right? So let's go back to the code. And then otherwise, right, this just means that we haven't computed the value already. Instead of just returning Fibonacci of n minus one, uh, and in minus two, we just store it in that array and then return it. Okay, so let's see how this improves our uh, our results, right? So instead of using call base, I've got a little helper function called call memo that'll do the allocation and freeing of memory for us, All right? And so let's go ahead and run this, right? So remember, um, it took quite a while to run this Fibonacci of 40, it took 33, uh, 331 million calls to Fibonacci to do it. What happens if we use memoization? Right, so it's pretty quick, and the reason why it's pretty quick is because it only takes 79 calls, right? So this is one of the you know key aspects of you know, you know memoization. Uh, so it, it's not just specific to recurs uh, recursive functions, uh, just normal functions that are you know maybe we have a method inside of a class, and maybe that method is very very expensive. Well, we can just have a field in that class that says whether or not we've pre-computed a specific value or not or if we've already done some computation or not, and just return maybe that cached value that's stored inside of, um, you know, an object instead of calling that method again. So it's, it's, it's broadly applicable uh, in many circumstances. And this is especially true if we already understand, um, you know, what inputs we're going to be getting to our methods or our functions, um, or if we know something about our input data, right? If we know that we have uh, maybe a lot of reuse or the same values being passed to a function over and over and over. Maybe it makes sense to just cache the most recently computed value and just check to see if the next value that's called has the same inputs. Then we don't have to call, say, an expensive function again. But that's going to do it for today. As always, you can check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. So all this code is available there, right? So it's in C++ Crash Course under optimizations. So we've got a whole bunch of different optimization strategies that we've looked at over the past couple of weeks, right? And then we looked at um, memoization today. So feel free to check out this example and let, let me know if you have any you know requests of any topics. And as always, hope you have a nice day.